下午我们的主题三是拓欢型教会倍增的角色，啊，下午就是比较讲到教会的拓殖跟增长啊，呃，好不好？我们还是先一起一起低头祷告，然后我们把下午的时间交托在上帝的手中啊。Shall we pray together? 亲爱的天父，我们呃为下午这段时间来感谢你。求主亲自与我们同在，也祝福啊 ，Dr. Stephen， 呃，把他的啊许多年的经验跟啊学习的专业来跟大家分享。求主亲自赐福下午，让我们说的、听的都能够有好的精神。我们把荣耀、颂赞归给你，求你与我们同在。奉靠耶稣基督的名，阿门。Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You like that music? Uh, yeah. Give them a hand. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. 感谢主哦。哈哈。都是台湾原住民的音乐哦。That type of music will plant a church. 哦。他说用这种类型的音乐可以可以建立教会哦。Yeah. 哎。It's right here. Uh, 145 to 245, 55. Okay, we're going to move into Pioneer Church multiplication. Ah, we 下午就是要来讲到呃拓荒教会，还有教会倍增。This is、uh, one of my favorite topics. Ah, this is 我最喜欢的一个题目之一。Uh, this is the reason I was actually hired at Biola to set up their church planning track. Ah, 其实我一开始呃 ，Biola 大学啊聘我就是要做这个部分的工作啊，主要就是讲到职堂跟教会的倍增。As I was、uh, working on my doctorate there,、um, I found out that the professor who taught church planning had never planted a church. 呃，在我之前。呃，教这个职堂跟增长的，他从来没有自己去开拓过教会。<笑> and so Dr. Lingenfelder, Sherwood Lingenfelder, told me you need to TA for him and then take the class over. <笑><笑>所以当时的这个系主任 Lingenfelder 就说哈，你先去做那个教授的助教，然后之后呢，把他把他接管过来。<laughs> And the rest is history. Then, <laughs> 后来事情就这样发生了。Yeah. yeah, one of my favorite topics.、Uh, yeah, 我喜欢这个这个题目。One of the things about the、uh, Great Commission that it implies that church planning is the primary method of evangel to evangelize the world. 呃，我想在大使命的这个命令当中，其实它隐含了一个很重要的意义，就是啊，我们。食堂是教会倍增，是是使万民做主门徒一个很重要的策略。The the term church planning or church multiplication or any other term associated with it, of course, is not mentioned in scripture. 呃，当然，教呃，圣经当中并没有直接会提到所谓的食堂啊、呃，或者说教会倍增这样的名词。嗯。Even though it's not mentioned, even like Sunday school is not mentioned, a number of things like that are not mentioned. That does not mean the concept of teaching your children is not there. 呃，但是就像这个圣经当中还有很多的名词，呃，虽然不出现啊，但是并不表示那个原则不在那里。比方说，我们应当要呃用三主日学教导我们的孩童啊，主日学这个词在圣经里面也是没有的。但是我们呃还是觉得这是有一个很好的原则在里头。呃 ，recall again C. P. Wagner's most quoted quote: "The single most effective evangelistic methodology under heaven is planting new churches." 呃，彼得·魏格纳的非常重要的一个名言，很几乎是最常被引用的一句话，就是呃，在全普天之下啊、呃，最有效的呃。最有效的布道策略、布道方法，哈，就是啊，职堂。And like any discipline, terminology emerges over time. 嗯，那么通
通常这这种名词在呃总是在讨论在学术界啊，它的名词会常常的与时俱进。The terminology helps、uh, with precision sometimes. So we have CP is church planning. 呃，比方说我们常听见的这个名词，第一个是职堂哈，用 CP. And CM is church multiplication. 那 CM 呢，就是就是讲的是教会倍增。And then SCP, saturation church planting. 呃 ，SCP 的话呢，就是饱和型的呃职堂。That began in Eastern Europe and then moved to Western Europe. Uh, SCP 呢，饱和性的祠堂，这个是呃，从这个 from East then to West， 从这个东欧，然后慢慢扩展到西欧。In Europe, yeah, yeah. And then the CPM, you often hear that term. It's a church planting movement. 那另外您可能也听过 CPM 这样的词啊 ，CPM 就是教会运呃，教会拓祠的运动。食堂运动。Close to CPM, the, the only distinction basically is one focuses on the church, the other focuses on making disciples. But basically, a CPM is the same as a DMM, discipleship making movement. 啊，那么另外一个叫做 DMM 哈，叫做门徒训练的运动。那这个是相对于教会食堂运动啊，比较强调门徒的部分。So if you read any literature, you're going to see those terms or those、um, initials there to grasp those terms, and that'll help give you an understanding of what it's、um, all about, what it's focusing on. Ah, 那么所以如果你读一些阅读一些英文的文献啊，你大概就会遇到这些的名词。Let's begin with asking the question: What is it not? What is church planning not about? Ah, <laughs> 我们呃，我教学喜欢先问问题哈，我们先问，到底这个职堂不是什么 ？It's not just evangelism。啊，职堂不只是布道。Although that's going to be the initial first step, but it's more than evangelism。呃，当然，你要建立教会，总是要经过布道的阶段啊。但是，职堂不只是布道。And it's not just social work. Ah, 也不只是社会工作，社会关怀。It's interesting. I've watched、uh, the various mission conferences that come and go at Biola, and then other schools that I've been in associated with. And I've watched it change from almost all the advertisement from the various mission agencies being focused on church planning in some capacity. Ah,、uh, 那么我自己在。啊，参加在百奥尔大学里面的一些研讨会，还有其他各式各样的这个宣教啊大会，啊，他们在讲到职堂运动或者是门徒门徒训练运动，几乎都会着重在某一个方面啊，这个很大的光谱的某一个方面。Probably ten years ago, I saw my first one, an agency that advocated business as mission. 啊，差不多十年前哈，就在我自己所啊，服侍的差会啊，开始讲到营商宣教。And today, when you go and look, very seldom will you see anything related to church planting, church multiplication. You see human trafficking, social communication of or social development of some capacity. 呃，那今天在西方，他们比较关心的宣教工作，已经越来越不是职堂，而是。啊，一些社会公益的问题，比方说人口贩卖的问题，或者一些啊社区发展啊永续经营这类的问题。We'll come back to that too later. 啊，我们可能有时间，我们后面再回来再谈。And it's not just social work and evangelism. 呃，这个它甚至也不是布道再加上社会工作。It's not just plant a church. Uh, this CPM 也不只是就是栽这个植一个堂 And it's not just plant a church and social work. 甚至也不是呃植一个堂再加上社会工作 And one I've seen a lot here in Asia is building a building, a church building. It's not about just building a church building. 那我在呃亚洲也常常看到啊。
，就是盖教堂啊。那 CPM 也不只是盖一个教堂。What is it then？ 那到底是什么呢 ？Pioneer Church Planning focuses on healthy harvesting and holistic churches. 呃、uh, ，C C M 或者教会增长运动，它的啊、uh, 最重要的核心，第一个是健康，第二个是啊、uh, 收割，第三个是整全。Healthy in the sense what they want to grow and mature in their spiritual development. 啊、uh, ，当我们讲到健康，我们是说他要在灵里面能够成长，呃、uh, ，成为一个呃、uh, 长大成人的基督徒。They're harvesting. That means They're sowing the gospel locally, and hopefully, eventually, globally. Ah,、uh, 第二个收割当然是他需要有有这个撒种的阶段，他必须要在他的所在的地区，甚至国外啊跨文化的地区来广泛的撒种。They take the Great Commission seriously. 他们把大使命是很严肃看待。And holistically. They also take the great commandment seriously. Ah,、呃、所谓的整全就是啊、呃，不只是大使命，而且是把大诫命很严肃的看待。We could summarize it this way. 那这是我们把它可以摘要的这样说。It's an individual or group effort designed to expand the kingdom of God by addressing the social and spiritual needs. Through uniting two eternal entities, the Word and people. Uh, this definition is written in your fourth chapter. It, this CPM, is a personal or a collective effort to expand the kingdom of God to solve social and spiritual needs through combining two parts. 主要的部分，上帝跟世上的人群。So the goal of this is to result in members of the host community placing their allegiance in Christ as Savior from sin. 呃，那么这个所建造出来的新的群体，他们会将他们的效忠摆在耶稣基督的身上，啊，承认他是救主，啊，拯救我们脱离罪恶。Then they gather together periodically. We're not saying how often, when, and where, but they need, they want to gather together. 然后呢，他们会啊、uh, 定期的聚集啊。我们这里没有讲说要多长聚集，但是它是一个啊、uh, 定期的聚集。And relying on the Holy Spirit to empower them, and the church planters as also not to be able to control them so much. 啊、uh, ，然后呢，在圣灵的这个赋能之下。呃，让他们依靠圣灵的大能大力，并且啊，教会的执堂者啊，也不断的成熟。And so they can mature in the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given them. 啊，在圣灵所赐的恩赐上面越加的纯熟。And the very skills He has given them, so that they can repeat this cycle again in other unchurched areas. 啊，之后呢？这个恩赐越加的熟练，以至于他们可以在其他的地区啊，继续还没有得着的福音未得的地区，继续这样的一个循环。This definition asks us to move beyond evangelism. 呃，这样的定义呢，就是让我们呃想的不只是在布道的这个层面。Evangelism adds to the existing group. Uh, numbers increase. 所谓的这个步道，它可以说是一个加法，它把得救的人加在已经有的这个属灵的群体上面。Church planners think this way. 呃，但是这个执堂者通常他们是他们的想法是这样的。They don't just think about evangelizing areas; they think about churching areas. 呃，他们想的不不只是步道一个一个的得着，而是而是什么地方有有没有教会？他是把教会要充满在没有教会的地区。嗯。So our goal when we went to Ifugao was not to evangelize every village in Ifugao. 呃，比方说我们我去到伊夫稿的时候
，我并不是我们的目标，并不是要让伊夫稿每一个人都啊、uh, 听见福音。So our goal was to find where are the strategic villages, and those are the villages that we'll set a church in, we'll plant a church, and let those that church then evangelize the area around it. 所以我们的目标不是让大规模的，好像探。好像让所有人都听见福音，而是很策略性的在寻找那一些村庄，在那个地方可以建立教会，这个教会可以成熟，然后再倍增啊，发挥它的影响力。啊、uh, ，much like Paul did when he said we've reached Asia， 啊、uh, ，就好像保罗说，我我们福音已经呃、uh, 传遍了整个亚细亚。Uh, and there's no way that he planted churches in every existing city all the way around. Uh, 当然，如果你看他地地图一摊开，他不可能每一个啊、uh, 上面的城市他都都已经建立教会。He planted them in strategic areas along the Ignatian Highway and various groups like that, so that he knew that if they planted a church there, it's going to flow this way or that way, or go this way or that way. Uh, <coughs> 但是这个使徒他有非常策略性的想法，因为在啊，这些重要的地区，它通常在沿着那个公路的主要城市。当它建立的时候，它可以预期这个福音将会从往西、往东会会扩展。Yeah. So church planting ends up in the in the side of multiplication, not just addition. 啊，所以呃 ，CPM 它它讲到的是，特别是强调倍增，而不是呃加法。它是一个乘法，而不是加法。What、uh, type of church multipliers are out there? What kinds? Uh, 那我们来看有哪一些类别哈，就是这个叫做 church 教会倍增者哈，有哪一些的类别 ？And we've looked at the first one in our introduction as the Apostle Paul being an apostle. He was a pioneer church planter. 啊，以保罗为例，他是一个使徒啊，那他也是一个。啊，拓荒型的这样的啊，执堂者。So he did not want to go where people had already been. I want to go to virgin territory. 啊，他他他说他啊，想要去的地方是没有人建立过的啊，不要建造在别人的根基上的。And Romans one five, his goal his goal was to、uh, call people to obedience to the faith. 在罗马书的一章五节，他说要。啊！呼召万民能够顺服基督。So this was some type of cross-cultural church planning that he was basically involved in. 那么我们可以说他是参与在一个跨文化的祠堂运动当中。So once he went outside his own Jewish people, then it became cross-cultural. 啊！所以一旦得着了他自己的这个犹太的百姓，他很快的就会进入跨文化的这个场域。A second type of church planter out there is called we call a founder. 呃，那第二种类型呢，我们可以说这样的人是一个啊创立者啊，创办什么什么的这个 founder。They start the church and then they remain there and become the pastor of that church. 呃、uh, ，所以通常这样的人呢，他是他辞了一个堂以后，他就在那个地方做主任牧师，他继续牧养这个教会。Mm-hmm. And a third type that we have, and this is mainly like in Europe, is a renewal church multiplier. 呃<coughs>、uh, ，那第三种很很常见的在欧洲就是复兴者，他把把这个复兴带进原来已经啊暮气沉沉的教会。These are individuals who go into where there was already an existing church, but it had major, major issues, splits, people angry at each other, and their goal is to get it back together and get it healthy so that it can go and start reproducing. Ah, 那这样的角色呢，常常他会去到一个地方，那个地方原来已经有教会，可是因为啊。一些纷争、分裂，或是造成教会的伤害，那他进去扮演一个医治者，把这些分裂的不同的群体又再次的带回来，啊，让这个教会得以复兴。I think this is one of the hardest roles for a church multiplier is to go in and fix all that. 
。那我觉得这这个角色其实是可以说所有的呃这个职堂角色里面最困难的一种。And then the fourth one that we found is a facilitative、uh, model, which asks the church multiplier to not go into pioneer settings, but now go into where there is existing churches and work with them to help them go out and do multiplication. Ah, 那第四种是所谓的协动者，协动者的角色，他会去到一个地区，那那个地方已经有教会。可是他可以说是一个动员的角色，让他们呃辅助他们，然后激励他们继续往前，啊、呃，能够把福音更加的扩张出去。That is probably、um, well, this one facilitative, and then the first one apostles. Those are the two that we're going to look at today. 啊、呃，那我们今天会着重在啊、呃、第一种跟第四种角色。嗯。When it was、uh, 2002, 2003, something like that, in the classroom, in the church planning classes that I had, I started noticing a very difference in the student makeup. Ah,、uh, 差不多是两千零三年那个附近。啊、uh, ，我在开这一门课的时候，我就发现我学生里面的组成开始有很大的变化。Before they took the class because they were going to go out and start a church somewhere around the world. Ah, in that before, my students most of them planned to go to some other part of the world to start a church. And then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no desire to go into church planning in a new pioneer setting. Then I had people in there who had no Uh, 职堂啊，建立教会这种。They wanted to go where the church was already in existence, and then work with those people there in that church to help them plant churches. 啊、uh, ，然后他们他们的目标呢是希望毕业以后找到一个教会，已经已经有了，然后他进去跟这个教会一起同工，以后再动员这个教会再去出去啊、uh, 建立新的教会。So then I had to ask myself the question: What changes should I make in the course? Then I was just thinking: That students' composition, their goals have changed. Then what kind of improvement should I make in the course? Then I was just thinking: That students' composition, their goals have changed. Then what kind of improvement should I make in the course? Then I was just thinking: That students' composition, their goals have changed. Then what kind of improvement should I make in the course? Then I was just thinking: That students' composition, their goals have changed. Then what kind of improvement should I make in the course? A question that arises is, what are the complexity levels and time frames in which church multiplication pioneer we're talking about pioneer church planning takes place? That we, next up is the fourth point, which is to talk about the role of the pioneer church planning, its complexity and time frame, and the time frame. I use the Acts 1:8 as a metaphor to discuss this topic. 呃<咳>， uh, 我就我用的这个经文是《使徒行传》的一章八节。And when I did this,、um, I came to some surprising conclusions that I hadn't thought of before. 呃、uh, ，当我当我在在呃、uh, 教这个部分的时候，我就呃、uh, 发展了一个模型。哎，结果呃、uh, 好像连我自己都有点惊讶，以前没有想过的。So the church in Jerusalem versus the church in Judea Samaria versus plant them at the ends of the earth wherever in different cultural settings. 那么，但是简单的说，其实他把我把它分成三大类，一个是耶路撒冷，啊，是同文化的；那第二种是犹大全地跟撒玛利亚，这是近文化的；然后再来就是直到地极，这是啊跨位跨越文化跨度比较大的。So we call Planning churches in Jerusalem, CM1. So I just called in Jerusalem, the Jewish language, I called it CM1. And Judea Samaria, CM2. Ah, Judea and Samaria, this is CM2. Ah, Samaria 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 and Samaria, this is CM2. Ah, Sam 那如果是跨越文化，在世界其他的地方的，我就把它称为 CM3。And we make the distinctions here because if we go back to Jerusalem, CM1, the culture 
is basically the same. The language being used is basically the same. 那这个在耶路撒冷的这种 model CM1 呢，基本上语言文化都是一样的。Yeah. And then if you go to Judea Samaria, okay, now the culture is similar, not exactly. It's there's some differences there, and linguistically there's some difference there as well. 那到了犹大跟撒玛利亚，那我们就发现它的呃语言跟文化是相近啊，但不完全相同。And then we'll send the Chinese to work among African Americans in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. Ah, 然后比方我如果把华人差去这个 Cleveland, Ohio 那边去向非洲裔的美国人啊传福音去那边祠堂。The culture is going to be very distant. 那 And the language is going to be very distant. 那不管是语言或者文化上面都是有非常大的差距。When the complexity level, when we move from CM1 to CM3, you can see the complexity level becomes stronger and stronger. 那从这个 CM1 到 CM3， 呃，它的复杂程度就越来越高了。So one of the questions I wanted to ask myself was then, what were the time frames that Paul worked with when he was doing this type of church planning in either of three, either of the three settings? 好，那我就进一步去研究。那保罗在这三种不同的啊、呃、场域在职堂的时候，他所用的或者停留的时间有没有什么差别？嗯、mm-hmm.。What I found was in Antioch. Four years, Corinth, four years, Ephesus, three years, Caesarea, two to three years, Rome, two to three years. 呃，结果我就发现呢，保罗在安提阿停留了四年，啊，哥林多四年，以弗所三年，呃，该撒利亚两到三年，罗马两到三年。嗯。So how long does it take to plant churches? 所以。请问要植一个堂要多久呢 ？It's going to depend on what complexity level you are planning that church. 啊，当然这个所需要的年数跟呃跟你所要植的堂，它的这个呃语言文化的跨度、复杂程度会有很大的不一样。One thing we find out then, Paul spent 15 of his 25 years. In five different centers. 那我们就发现保罗其实在他呃二十五年当中啊，差不多花了十五年在五个重要的这个地理中心。Let's go back to this, and here's a question for you. 然后我们再回到刚才这个这个图表，然后啊，请问大家一个问题。In the book of Acts, we'll just take it, keep it in the book of Acts. 啊，在《使徒行传》，我们先把呃这个就留在《使徒行传》的这个地方。Where did Paul focus? In which one or two or three did he focus his attention in church planning? CM one, CM two, CM three. 那请问保罗他的生涯当中，呃，主要把他的努力，呃。放在什么地方？是 CM one 还是 CM two 还是 CM three？ We get any answers out there? Three? I hear three. Oh, I think that's three. 还有呢？有人讲 CM two. No, we got a two over here. <laughs> you cannot graduate from CES unless you know. <laughs> 如果答错了，你就不能从华神毕业。呃 ，Let's let's see here. What can we find out? This was my surprise. 然后你知道吗？我很惊讶的发现。Yeah. You were correct. C one. Miss everybody missed one. Did anybody have a one? Because whenever Paul went where to any city, the first place he always would go to first were. Is to the synagogue, right? Yeah, and so that was his starting point. So my answer, you see, CM one to two, this is the most popular. 
啊，我们看到保罗每次到一个地方，他都会先拜访什么？犹太的会堂。CM3 was really quite rare. CM3 其实很少哎。And my favorite one is Lystra. 呃，那我最喜欢的是他在路斯德的那一段。Remember Paul and Barnabas show up there, and they start talking, and pretty soon they bring out the bulls and the garlands. <laughs> And Paul said, "No, no, don't do this." I most like is in Lystra because everyone remembers Barnabas and Paul. They went to preach the gospel. They started preaching for a while, and the people in the town started to come out. The sheep, the goats, the cattle were brought out, and they wanted to bring them to the church. Paul said, "Don't do this." Don't do this. 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 呃，那么那个地方呢？呃，可以说是完全一个跨文化的场域。那对保罗来讲，保罗连保罗都不太熟悉的。And what he didn't know was the myth that they had, which said, or which talked about Zeus and Hermes came one time and asked them to follow them, and they refused to do it, and a flood came and only one house remained, <laughs> and so. The Lystrians were very smart. We're not going to do that again. Yeah, that Lystra, the local, of course, has a story. It's the story of Zeus and and the Hermes, ah, who once visited their village. At that time, he wanted to urge them to follow him, but the villagers all refused. Ah, later, the flood came and the village was destroyed. And only one family survived. So later, the Lystrians were the only ones who survived. 所以后来这路斯德人他们很聪明，他们就汲取这个教训。Yeah. So that's why they brought out the bulls and the garlands to placate the、uh, Paul and Barnabas. One would speak and one would not speak, and then that was Zeus and Hermes to them. Yeah. <笑>那所以当然后来这路斯德人他们就把这个巴拉巴当作宙斯，把这个保罗啊说话啊灵手的这个保罗呢当作是荷尔米。然后呢，要准备给他们献祭，给他们献花。Yeah. Athens, the, where the philosophers were and so forth, that could have been a cross-cultural experience. It's hard to tell right there. Uh, <coughs> 那雅典呢是另外一个保罗去的一个城市啊，那个地方你可以说它算是一个跨文化的场域。Mm-hmm. Ephesus for sure was a very distant cross-cultural experience for Paul and them. Uh, 以弗所呢？啊，以弗所当然。也是一个文化上面相当差异的一个地方。Yeah. And then Malta, of course, that was not by design. <laughs> It was a shipwreck that they ended up there. So,、um, and that was definitely a cross-cultural experience where the snake comes out. <laughs> <laughs> 那最后一个是马耳他岛哈，圣经翻译作米利大。呃，当然这个不是他自己愿意去的，那就是船难，就就跑到这个。呃，马耳他岛上面，然后蛇毒蛇咬他啊！大家知道那个故事。So let me go back to the time frame. If Paul and his associates took four years or so with an itinerant type ministry, not living among them, basically what? Being there for a period of time, leaving, returning, leaving, returning, or sometimes sending people in replacement of Paul. And it took four years to do that. If we move to a CM3, which is very distant culturally, one would suspect that what it would probably take more time to plant a church than what it took in the new, in the Acts that we see in Acts. Yeah, so we can reasonably infer that if Paul is in a cross-cultural environment, he will need to spend four years in the church. 而且他是进去教导，然后呢一段时间离开，之后再进去再离开。同文化的是要这样都要花四年，那么要到一个完全跨文化的这个地方去宣教，啊，所需要建立教会的这个时间肯定是更长。Another question we could ask is, what are the core church fundamentals? 那我们要。继续问的一个问题就是，呃，这个教会的核心的根本是什么 
So if we read Acts 2, which gives us a good understanding of what took place there, verse 42, 242. Uh, and 43 through uh, 47. You, you read all that? Yeah. 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 Uh, 那四十二到四十七 Chunzhuanshi find from those verses is that when the church the church gathered together, there was teaching, that is the apostles' doctrines were taught. Uh and they ate a meal together, and that would be followed by um, the ordinance of communion. They prayed together. They had a common purpose of glorifying God in whichever way they could. There was the sharing of those who had things, money, whatever, could be shared with those who did not, within the group and without the group. And then there were signs and wonders. <laughs> I think that must be a mistranslation, huh? <laughs> no, there were signs and wonders there as well. <clears throat> and what happened? What was the result of what happened there in that type of activity? There was the awe of God was presence. There was reverence. And the outsiders actually liked them. At least for a short period of time. <laughs> Persecution will come. There was growth. The numbers increased through evangelism and church planning. Not mentioned, but implicit in this would be leadership development. And of course, missions would come out of this as well. We will get deacons and we will get apostles that will now go out to the rest of the world. And So a local church then consists of a group of people who trust Christ as their Savior. They organize their corporate lives according to indigenous and biblical principles. Yeah. And that's where we have to let them organize themselves so that it doesn't look like if we bring a Western church here, the music sounds Western, the program is very Western in how it's done, that type of thing. Indigenous 
呃，以至于他的音乐、他的一些聚会的风格是本色化的，而不是一种外来的形式。Their purpose then is to glorify the Triune God. 啊，他们的目的当然就是一同来荣耀三一真神。And they do this through worship, instruction, social endeavors. And evangelism that leads to reproducing churches. Ah, 那他们的这个荣耀神的行动，就是通过敬拜啊、教导，还有社区的、社会的关怀、布道等等，能够让教会啊得以再生。With that background in mind, let me give you some backstory to passing the baton. Ah, 那么呃，讲到这边呃。我在跟大家说，分享一个我在伊夫稿那边的故事。那这些故事就是现在呃那本新书啊，《遇见事业的宣教士》那个《Passing the Baton》那本书的背后的故事。嗯、mm.。When we arrived in the Philippines,、uh, we have a guest home in Manila. 呃，我们。我们家在进入这个衣服稿之前呢，我们先在马尼拉那边是有一个啊招待所。So missionaries are coming and going all the time。那这个招待所当然就有宣教士常常进进出出。So when people would come there, and I was still there, we were there for a little week and a half or two weeks like that before we moved anywhere。呃，通常我们会在招待所啊逗留个啊七天两个礼拜。然后我们才会进到我们各自的呃宣教区。I would ask each one of the missionaries when they came from their various tribal groups, how how many churches have been turned over to the local tribal people to run themselves, be their own pastors? 呃，那我在这个招待所的时候，常常就是跟我们的这些宣教士们聊天。我就问说，你们所服侍的那个地区啊、呃，有多少教会是？成功的建立，而且把领导权啊交给当地人啊，由当地人来啊做牧师、牧养等等。I asked that question because in our new tribes training back in the states or in Australia or in England, we talked about the three cells: self-propagating, self-supporting, self-governing. 啊，那么啊，新部落差会，不管是在美国、在澳洲或在英国。我们在训练的时候都很强调三自的原则啊，就是自立、自养、自传的原则。One of the things we heard over and over again in our training was work yourself out of a job。那我们常常说，就是要要准备让自己失业。Back to my question that I asked everybody: How many of you have turned over works to the Local people, and they are have they're the pastors of their own churches. Ah, 那么我同样问大家这样的问题：有多少人是呃建立的那个教会，然后之后成功的交棒的 ？And how many do you think, after 20 years of work in the Philippines by New Tribes Mission, in at least 17 different tribal groups, maybe 20? Yeah, and got it. <laughs> Zero. Nobody had turned any work over to the locals. Nobody. No. This twenty-ge, I with about twenty-ge team, ah, this missionary team, they are about seventeen different groups and communities to preach. I ask them who has successfully turned the work over to the locals. They say, "No one." No one has turned the work over to the local people. No one has turned the work over to the local people. And then our field director decided we should have a meeting with him after about a week, after jet lag. Seems like I'm always getting over jet lag. 那么那个工厂主任后来呢，就就召集大家嘛，大概大概就是一个礼拜十来天这样子，差不多就是你要你要克服你的这个时差。他现在也还在克服时差，这个。然后开始有一些的这个聚集讨论。And he started by saying, you know, when new missionaries arrive, they ask a lot of questions. 啊，他们就说，哦，这个新的宣教士到达的时候，他们会问很多很多的问题。
And I'm thinking this is not going well. <laughs> <笑>然后我就觉得，哇，这个好像好像这个苗头不太对。Sometimes they just need to be here for a while to realize it takes time to understand the Filipino mind. 呃，因为首先这些宣教士、这些新手都发现，光是要了解菲律宾人的想法，就要花花上一段时间。And then he said, you know. It's good though that we keep having new missionaries come here and ask a lot of questions. 然后他就说，我们很感谢主啊，这个一直都有新的宣教士来，然后他们一直问一些问题。Now I'm thinking this might not be as bad as I thought it was. 那那这个这个现象可能也不算太坏了。He said, you know, we need to hear those questions because sometimes we who have been here a long time forget. About why we actually came here. <laughs> 那这个工厂主任说，还好有这些新手，他们来问这些问题。那对我们这些呃老鸟，已经在这边很久了，很很多时候住太久以后，忘了我们当初为什么来到这个地方了。And then he says, "I want you to come up with a model." That will get us out of this mess. Then he just he just told us when we attended the meeting, "That please, you guys, these few days, think about can we develop a model that will not let us get out of this mess after 20 years and still have no way to get out of this mess." Now I'm thinking. Now I am in trouble. Then I just feel like I'm really going to get into trouble. He said, "Don't just be a questioner; be a contributor." 然后他就他就说：“你不要只会问题啊，你要尝试提供解答吧。” And then he says, "Because every year we had an annual field conference where all the missionaries, 170 whatever, would come in from all the various islands and meet、um, over by、um, in Bataan there, in、uh, close to Corregidor." 那,那我们呃，通常每一年哈，宣教师都会有每一年的年度退休会。呃，当时大概有一百七十个，或者多少一百一一一两百位宣教士呢，我们就到这个马尼拉附近的一个名胜古迹那边啊，一个退休会的地方。And then he says, at our next field conference, I would like you to present that model to our group. 好，就是还定了一个时辰，你们明年哈，我们明年的年度退休会的时候，请你们提出一个模型哈，来解决这个问题。By then I was trying to find how do I get back to the U.S. <笑><笑>我在想，我要在明年之前赶快绕跑回美国去。Oh man, I think don't you know that in the missionary world there's a pecking order? <笑><笑>你知道这个宣教士常常搬家，这个搬家都要有一个打包打包的这个顺序。You know, some of these people have been here fifteen, twenty years, and you, I've just got here. <笑><笑>那有一些老鸟已经在这个地方这个十五二十年，我才刚刚到这个地方哎、欸。I said, okay, I'll try. <笑><笑>然后就出生之犊不畏虎，我就说好吧，我我试试看。So one of our breaks during language language school, him and I went up to Ifugao, and we walked from the north to the south, the entire the entire way. 呃，那么后来呃，退休会这个结束以后，我们呃，我跟我的家人，我们就去到伊夫稿那边。我首先做的就是。勘察这整个伊夫稿从南到北，从东到西。And then he said,、um, "I remember one of our first villages we stopped in. I'm listening to this language, and I'm thinking, 'Oh my gosh, I got to learn this language.' And I'm listening to it. And, you know, I knew it was a little bit of Tagalog by then, but it was like this is really different." <laughs> wow. 那首先我就听那些村民叽里咕噜在讲一些。我完全听不懂的话，我我那时候我已经学了一点点 Tagalog 啊 ，Tagalog 是马尼拉他们的国国家语言，嗯，但是这个伊夫稿的话是完全不一样的，我就想我我完了。And he said one day you'll be speaking this language。然后他就说，哎<笑>、欸，有一天你会学会讲他们的语言
And it turned out to be true. Uh, <coughs> Three weeks later, I was fluent. That may be a little encapsulated. Uh, yeah. As I was thinking about the situation and what the people had told me, what I realized is what they had done is they'd gone in and learned language and culture, which is a great thing. Uh. 那我想在我之前的那些前辈，其实他们也是一样，他们就是进到衣服稿那边，然后就开始学习他们的语言跟文化。And then they would start doing evangelism.然后他们就开始布道了。And people would eventually come to the Lord.然后，哎，真的就有人信主了。And then they would say, "Well, we need to start discipling them now, so we'll disciple them.然后呢，我们就开始进入门训阶段喽，开始门训那些新信主的人。They would teach them about prayer, about communion, about all these different things that a new believer needs to know.啊，所以这个职堂者，我们的宣教士开始教他们呢，怎么祷告啊，然后怎么领圣餐呢，怎么讲道啊，等等这些啊，就是教会的这个routine。Then they did leadership development. 完了以后就开始建立啊领袖。So eventually they would actually have leaders that could be pastors in their these churches. 然后当然就有一些。有一些人看起来是神兴起来，将来可以呃做牧师、做领袖的。So they would teach these leaders different parts of scripture. 然后呢，我们就开始教这些啊教会的领袖哈，这个圣经的不同的部分。They think, well, they're not really ready yet, so we'll teach them this part over here of scripture. We'll teach them about this type of doctrines and so forth. 啊，然后就发现。这样教了以后，好像还还是不够，他们好像还没有完全学会，那就再加一点点，多多教一点系统神学，多教一点他们的教义。Well, they're not quite ready yet, so we need to teach them some more, and we'll we'll cover this now. 然后他们又又说，可是好像他们还是没有没有没有预备好，哎，那是不是还要再教别的东西啊？再继续教吧。By now, the years are passing. <laughs> but they're not ready yet, so we need to teach them some more. And that went on and on and on and on. They were never quite ready. What I realized was that these individuals with a very deep heart for God and very committed, living in very difficult environments, there were no Starbucks, there were no McDonald's, there were no anything like that ever around, right? It wasn't their commitment level. It was they did not have in mind what the final picture should look like to know when they should leave. They did not have an exit strategy. Now, 没有 Starbucks, 没有麦当劳, 没有这些便利的设施, 可是呢, and then I start realizing, wow, they'll keep going forever. These people will never quite be ready. But you know what? If they would have had an exit strategy to know when they reach this level, these people are ordained, and these people are the pastors, and these people are going to direct this church, these churches. Uh,那么换句话说，就是他们没有一个清楚的图像，在在整个建立教会的这个不同的阶段，他们什么时候看到信徒成长到哪一个地步，他们可以退场。到什么一个地步，他们可以交棒。Mm. 
And so the next conference, I presented this model. <laughs> <laughs> 所以在啊、呃、隔年的这个啊、呃、年度退休会当中，我就把这个模型呢就 present 给啊、呃、所有的童工。Uh, and then I ran away quick before they could catch me. <laughs> <laughs> 然后我就赶快跑，免得他们抓到我。<laughs> and we'll just walk through this model. And、um, when I was on the, when we were in the Philippines, I did not have the pre-entry part here. 呃，那么一开始的时候，就是在你你们呃十七页、十六页、十七页的这个图，呃，我刚开始发展的时候还没有一个叫做进入之前的那一段，只有只有原型的部分。No, used to work. 啊，有没有 pointer？ 我们有童工可以借用一下那个 pointer 吗 ？We we have a pointer. Oh, here we go. Okay. This one. That one. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Pre, there we go. The pre-entry. I didn't. I didn't do that one. And then I worked with an organization called Center for Organizational and Ministry Development. 呃，那么当时呢，我还没有。还没有这个 pre-entry 哈，进入之前的那一段。那后来我在一个机构，那这个机构是专门做啊，职堂跟教会发展策略的一个中心。And we help different mission agencies select their church planters. 呃，那么我在那个中心呢，就开始发展一些的策略。第一个就是怎么样去筛选合适的职堂者。Yeah, and so this is when I realized. If you are going to select a church planner who will give up power to the locals, then you, that's one of, the, one of the characteristics you would look for. Are they not afraid to give away power? Uh, 那么如果你的目标是有一天要 Because think of it, you studied for how many years? You've learned the language, and now you want to teach them, and you want to keep teaching them. Leaving is hard. Yeah, because for the majority of people, when you are the first to enter the church to start, and you are going to teach them. 其实你会开开始会觉得我你很重要，我需而且需要继续的教，继续的教导他们。你好不容易才学会他们的语言嘛，所以要教棒其实不太容易的。So if you want somebody who's willing to give away power, I want those people in church planning. 那所以我在这个发展中心的第一个就是在筛选筛选这个职堂者的时候，第一个就是要筛选那种愿意把。把这个权力交出去的人。So we'll go through these one by one real quick here. So pre-entry then, which is the one up here. Oops, there's one here.、Um, that is where you get whatever you can get. You learn whatever you can learn, and try to practice what you're learning right there in context before you go over. So this is pre-field. 好，那么第一个就是在。啊、uh, ，进入之前，上工厂之前，其实那个那个阶段呢，哈、uh, ，就是你就是能够尽可能的学习、吸收，然后应用的那个阶段。So pre-evangelism, which would be its part in here, then this is where you're living now among them, and so now you're learning their culture and you're learning their language. 啊、uh, ，接下来就是步道前期啊， uh, 在这一段时间，它是一个研究跟关系发展的啊， uh, 就是啊、uh, 建立关系，然后赢得你啊、uh, 宣讲的这个权利。This is where you start building strong relationships. 啊、uh, ，这个阶段是你啊、uh, 建立很坚固的人际关系的一个阶段。You want these strong relationships with the gatekeepers of the community. 那特别是这个阶段，你要跟那个啊、呃、族群，他的 gatekeepers， 就是那些重要的
啊核心人物啊来建立好的关系。This is where you earn the right to be heard. 然后这段时间你可以赢得你被听见的这个权利。So then, the evangelism is this one in here. Uh, 接下来就是差不多在啊两点钟到三点钟方向的，这是布道的阶段。Because you know the language and culture, now you can present the gospel in a very contextualized way. 啊，那这个时候其实是一个呃，你的语言能力比较强了，你可以被了解，你可以用清晰的方式跟他们阐明啊，说明福音的这个阶段。And you want to be make sure you you want to make sure you're being heard by the right people. 然后你你要确定那些该听到的人都听到了这个福音啊。Not everybody that wants to hear, quote unquote, is necessarily there for your benefit. They're there for their benefit. 啊，因为有一些人他来来听你讲啊，他可能是别有用心的。所以我这边说。你要让那些对的人听见。Then、uh, post evangelism takes us around as we dis,、um, do discipleship and then leadership development. It's all taking place during this time. 那步道后期呢？这个这个地方当然就是所有的门训啊、教导啊等等啊，都是啊、呃、在这一段发生的。This is where you give away power. 那这个步道后期，其实这一段就是开始你要预备啊、呃，要要把权力下放的时候。This is where you back away from doing all the evangelism and letting them do the evangelism. 那这个这就是就是该是一个正确的时候，不再是你自己出去传福音步道，而是啊、呃、差遣这些会友出去步道传福音。This is where you back away from doing all the teaching and let them do the teaching. 然后这也是那个那个阶段，就是你要开始下放这个教导的权利，让让当地的人可以开始啊、呃、教导。You never do for the locals what they can do for themselves. 呃，只要是当地人，他可以自己做了，你你就不应该帮他们做。And then the final what stage there is? Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't have a picture of that. It's phase out, and we call that responsible neglect. That 最后这个就是要淡出了，要要交棒的阶段，淡出我们称为有负责任的忽略。So you leave geographically, but you do not leave relationally. 呃，也就是说，在地理上面，在你人不在那里，但是你的心还是跟他们在一起啊，这。这样的关系。This model actually begins not up here or not even here on scene. This model begins here with an exit strategy. 呃，那在这整个的模型当中，其实不是从步道前期那边开始，而是你在观念上面要从交棒的那个。那种心态开始。Exit strategy should drive every phase of this model. 那么这种就是预备交棒的这个心态，必须要常常存在你的脑后，而且贯穿在整个职堂的每一个阶段。When that happens, you'll know when to leave, and they will be empowered to be able to carry on the ministry. 只有这样，你才能才能够在事实，你在观察他们，呃，什么时候可以把棒子交给他们。Okay, timing. Yeah. 所以时间差不多，我们下午第一堂就先讲到这边，呃，两点五十五分了哈。啊，谢谢大家的专注。下午第一堂是最不容易<笑>，呃，提振精神的时候啊。那待会儿 ，Dr. Tom Stephan 会在外面签书啊，所以如果你有买他的书，呃，希望他来帮你 sign 这个签名啊，我们会在外面有一个书桌啊，啊，我们这一堂就到这边啊，休息一下。